What is good everyone? Welcome to the channel and a special episode where I'm not doing my usual walk and talk. Instead, I'm just going to stand here and we are going to enjoy the Mount Fuji sunset together. I am going to talk about a topic. I'm going to get into the idea of Japan as a semi or narrow, small country. And I'm going to get into some details that might surprise you. As usual, the truth is a little bit more complicated than what is commonly believed. But at any rate, let's enjoy the view and let's get started with the video. get started with the content I want to say please offer the like button a steaming cup of green tea because we are in Japan and give a nice hearty irashaimase to the subscribe button welcome hit that and let's get into the topic all right with Fujisan in the background it may not seem at all like Japan is considered a semi or narrow small country but you hear this a lot from people, often from Japanese themselves. And what do they mean by that? Well, I think some of it's pretty obvious. Japanese homes tend to be smaller. Apartments are small, houses are smaller. The streets are very narrow. I love taking my American friends who visit on a narrow street. The first thing when they come to visit me, we just hop in the car and we go somewhere and I take the narrowest streets possible, give them a little bit of a white knuckle special ride. But, of course, it's a little more complicated than that. And I don't necessarily accept that Japan is or has to be a semi-country. In fact, I mean, you can see when we get out of the countryside, things get a lot more wide open. And yeah, Fujisan might be a extreme example, but I'm going to get into some more details about countryside living as well. First of all, yes, it's true, Japanese homes are smaller, Apartments are smaller, cars are smaller, roads are more narrow, and part of that is because of the mountains. Now, if you look around Mount Fuji, there's no really immediate mountains around it, which is one thing that makes it so spectacular. But the rest of the valley I'm in at the moment is surrounded by mountains, and there really are no structures on those mountains. Traditionally, the mountains here are the spiritual places, the places where the kami, or the gods reside. So you don't build in the land of the gods. You don't put up houses or businesses. And so for the most part, the mountains in Japan are pristine. There might be some radio towers on them. Uh, an occasional structure you might see is a shrine, which is appropriate if it's dedicated to the gods of that mountain. But in general, you will not find structures on mountains in Japan. So that, of course, narrows down what you can build on and sort of limits you to flat open spaces. Now, the next reason that Japan is a semi or narrow small country is a little bit self-inflicted. Actually, there are a lot of abandoned houses and businesses and shops and general buildings in Japan and this is because municipalities and the government can't really seize derelict buildings that no one is laying claim to. Land and buildings have been passed on in a family, but then records have been lost and the family's no longer around. And so there's a lot of places where it's not actually known who owns the structure. And so dotting the Japanese countryside and in the cities as well, there are a lot of just empty, houses and empty buildings that with a little bit of creativity and ingenuity could be turned into something really useful. For example, in the town I'm in right now, there is a shopping street that has been slowly dying over the past few decades. And it's basically a combination of a few shops that are still struggling and ones that have long since pulled their shutters down never to open again. And 
it's been a concern of the city and they had ideas, you know, how can we revive this area? And talking to people who live here, really the one thing that keeps people from really shopping on that street, it's not Amazon, it's not a big mall, it's not those two things, it's lack of parking. That shopping street may have survived back in a time when it could rely on foot traffic, but those times are past and there's really no place to park there. So it doesn't take a lot of imagination to think, well, a few of those shuttered shops could be removed and turned into a little bit of parking space and that would revive the area. But either the owners can't be found or the owners aren't willing to sell or no one has even gone forward with this idea. So the third and final thing I'm going to mention about why Japan is a semi or narrow country or why it's said to be is the fact that the best way to explain it is to show a difference in the countryside between America and Japan and basically the reason for this is going to be traditional Japanese village structure. If you drive across America, the countryside out where the farmland is, you're going to see field, 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 farmhouse, field, 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 farmhouse, etc. You have farmhouses with a large yard, there's a dog running around, there's a tire swing, and they have a lot of space. If you've taken the Shinkansen or bullet train from Tokyo to Osaka, Kyoto, you may have seen that the countryside that goes by is field, 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 cluster of houses smashed together, field, 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 cluster of houses smashed together. And what that is, is the traditional Japanese village structure of the houses all being built together with the rice paddies surrounding them completely. And a lot of communities are still built this way, meaning that instead of having a nice bigger yard with, a, you know, with space between you and your neighbors, you actually are right crammed up against your neighbors as if you were in a bigger city. Again, kind of a self-inflicted narrowness. Now, I'm not gonna tell the Japanese to stop doing that cultural norm of putting their communities close together. I think that maybe it's a nice thing and it's a tradition and I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. I certainly don't see the not building on the mountains as a bad thing. Let's leave the mountains green and pristine and beautiful. Let's leave them as the land of the gods. As for the last one, the one that I spoke about second, the derelict and abandoned buildings, that is something where I feel Japan could really make improvements, somehow change the laws or regulations about land repossession. If, if no one knows who the owner is and no one ever comes forward in a certain amount of time, you know, the city can use that land in a constructive, community-oriented way, I think that would be fantastic and would make Japan much less of a semi-narrow country. What do you think? What do you think of the things I've lined out? Do you have any other points you would make? Do you agree or disagree with anything? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't given that green tea to the like button yet, please do so right now if you enjoyed this video. And even if you didn't enjoy the video, how could you not have enjoyed that? at least put up a like for Fujisan. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will catch you next Friday because I put a new video out every single Friday about Japan, society, life, and culture. Please look for my other work and I will catch you next time. Peace.